I've done a few tutorials on retrieving data, mostly in JSON format. However, based on comments on these tutorials, I've realized I have left a few people hanging. I realized they were not aware how to access the JSON data once it was retrieved. That is what we will look at in this tutorial. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. When data is returned from a site or loaded into a program, it is usually provided in JSON format. That is a very common practice. Now, this data is provided as text formatted as JSON. The nice thing about JSON text is that it can easily be converted into a JavaScript object. Once you have a JavaScript object, you can then access the individual pieces of that data. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the JSON format, I have a tutorial on that. I'll link to it in the description. In fact, the other tutorials referred to, I will link to them as well. Now, let's first take a look at the end result of another tutorial where I was teaching how to use fetch. And we we're using fetch to load some JSON data into JavaScript. Now, here's the code. Basically, we've set up a fetch statement. This is where we're accessing the JSON file to load it in. Fetch creates a promise. If you're unfamiliar with that, I'll link to tutorials on that as well. And so we handle that promise with a then. We receive the data and then we use the JSON command to convert that data to JSON format. That returns a promise as well. And so we handle that promise in the next then. And at that point, what I did at the end of that tutorial is just log it to the console. Now, an important thing about using fetch, if you haven't gone through that tutorial, is in order for this to work, you must be serving this HTML page that the JavaScript file is attached to, serving it up through a server. I'm using a desktop server to do that. That's what I usually use for testing. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we have so far. So I'm just going to refresh that, make sure I have the latest, and then open the console. And as we can see, there is an object displayed. Now, what's the process of going about and retrieving this data? Well, since it's a JavaScript ob object, it's pretty simple to do. It's not too difficult. But basically, let me give you an overview of what we'll do. First thing you want to do when you're getting data is take a look at that data. That's what we're doing now. See how it is formatted. Notice that we have an object, and it has a property of class, has a property of date, has a property of students. The property students is an array. That gives me a little bit of information. These other two properties are just strings. So what I want to do is set up some variables, and I'm going to assign that data to the variables. Once I've done that, then I can use those variables in whichever way I want throughout my program to use that data that was brought in. So let's look at doing that first. So I'm going to come up here to the top, and I'm simply going to declare some variables. The class is going to contain the data that was in the class property. The date will contain data in the date property. And then finally, all students. This is going to be an array because this is going to contain the data that was in the student's property, which was an array. So now I have those variables declared. I just need to assign the data to those variables. And I, I do that in this second then clause. Because that is where I receive data, a JavaScript object, because the text was converted from JSON format to an object. So first, the class, I'll set that equal to data.class. Simple as that. We use the dot syntax to access each of those properties in the object. The date is equal to data.date. And then finally, all students is equal to data.students. All right, let me save that. Let's jump out again and refresh. 
Now I've got those assigned to variables. I can then access them. For example, the class. There I have that string that was contained in that class property. The date. Same thing. Now students, all students, I mean. There we can see that array. Now if we needed to access individual students, obviously we do that as we would any array. So I'm going to access the third student there, which is Amber Larson. So that's very simple how I can access that data. Assign it to a variable, and then I can use that data throughout my program. Now, a trick to remember is that this is asynchronous. Because we're using promises, fetch returns a promise, it's asynchronous. That means we need to wait until this final then before we're able to access the data. For example, if I enter console.log here for the class, let's see what we get. I'll refresh. We get undefined. It's undefined because the final promise is not returned and therefore there is nothing in class. So using that idea, let's look at something else. Let's say I had a bunch of data returned and I wasn't sure what that data looked like. As I mentioned, you can log it to the console and take a look at it and see if you can figure it out. There's another way to do that. And you can do that with a for in loop. And that's covered in another tutorial as well. Once again, I'll include a link in the description. So if I were to set up a for in loop down here, let the property in an object. Now first I need to set up that object. So we're going to declare another variable here. Main obj. I'm going to set that equal to an empty object to begin with. And then once this returns, we'll assign data to it. And basically we'll just make it the data object. That object that is returned in this promise, the object that contains all the data. So if we're using a for in loop, we're looking at each property in main object. And then we want to console.log what the property is. And then also console.log the value of the property. The way we show the value of the property is using main object. That's the object. And then we access that property using the square brackets, like that. And that will display all the properties and then the value associated with that property in this object. So if we're getting data and we want to see everything that's a part of that, that's a part of that JSON data once it's converted to an object, we can use a for in loop to do that. Now, right now, this is not going to work. Now remember, why is it not going to work? Because it's asynchronous. This loop's not going to find anything. So if we refresh, we're not getting anything from that loop. There's no log statements coming out. And that's because this is happening before this happens. So what we need to do is set this up in a function. So I call it show obj. Set that equal to a function. And then inside of that function, let's put this for loop. Let me just format that properly. All right, we got that for loop in there. Now, once data is assigned to main obj, we can simply call that function like that. Now, this time we should see the output, all the properties and the values. So let's take a look at that. So here's the first class that's displayed inside that promise. Then here's the first property. Here's the value of that property. It's a string. Here's the second property. Here's the value of that property, an array. Here's the third property. Here's the value of that property. Now, one thing about the for in loop, it doesn't always go in order. So be aware of that. So that is another way to find out what information is contained in JSON data. And then you can use the dot syntax, assign it to a variable, 
however you would like to do that. And once you've done that, you can access that throughout your program. Or you may want to simply sign it to a main object like I did here in this variable, and then I could use this object to access any of the properties throughout my program. All right, now hopefully you found that helpful. And if you're struggling with how to access that JSON data once it received, hopefully that helped you see how to do that. Now before we're done here, please hit the like button. It can help others find this tutorial. And if you want to dive deeply into JavaScript, I provided discount links to all my courses in the description section. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face. I release a new tutorial each week. You can also click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com, for a complete list of tutorials and other resources. Thanks for watching.